again from Sheba after a week's break. Frankly, I never thought anybody would notice. Because for most, every day seems like a never-ending Sunday. First to pop the question was Sujit. Initially, I used to send him the mantra audio clips by Wednesdays. And he had time to work on it till Sunday. And ta-da! The lockdown mantra takes its breathtaking form on Monday mornings. Soon after, online classes started, Wednesdays became Fridays, then Sundays, and even Monday mornings. Through all my erratic timings and late postings, Sujit patiently worked through and wove his magic. But last week, I hit a roadblock. The topic was running through my head, but I just couldn't find time to sit and write in peace. And I was pleasantly surprised to see that my mantra was missed by a few well-wishers. One of the main news that came out the last couple of weeks were the board exams and their results. The toppers, pictures splashed the newspapers and other social media, while the others were just as overjoyed that they had crossed another hurdle in life. Hurdles that are placed in our lives to define who we are by the society. The hurdles are well illuminated by the prices to be received for achieving top grades. Admission to the best college, where the cutoffs are high and the donations are even higher for a poor scholar. Best job placement, where again your marks are played out over and over again like a stuck visual. Best career, where promises of great pay and even greater life is played out. The ultimate life, where you're made to believe that you're going to be living your dreams. But what is the reality? If you're not lucky, it's harsh and bitter. This is a simple but deep statement. That brings me to tell you why I decided to talk about this. Last Sunday was the birthday of a special boy I had taught about 12 years back. His name is Zubin. He was the hero of our school where every child spoke his name with awe and admiration. He was the darling of his friends and the apple of the eye for us teachers. No, he wasn't super brilliant but he has a heart of gold. His sole focus in life was to become a sprinter who would represent India at the national or international level. He scored high marks for his 12th, much to his and his family's surprise. But only after a lot of struggle did he get admission into a prestigious college in Chennai. He wanted to go there because he felt he could pursue his passion of sports, music and English over there. But fate took form of insensitive peers and a cruel college atmosphere. You must be surprised at the sudden twist. Well, Subin is a little different, but it never mattered to any of us who loved and admired him that he stuttered. Sadly, it did to those tactless crowd that teased and tormented him till it broke him down completely and shattered him. It took him a lot to find peace within and with the world outside. So this mantra is for those children who aren't a part of the herd of toppers. I don't mean to disrespect the star performers because their struggles are also real and at times frustrating, but most often rewarding. There are a lot of families with children who are in a world of their own because they are never enough for the society around them, who are always judgmental.
Sadly, I am a part of that crowd and constantly bug my older one to buckle up his act. As parents and more so, as mothers, we are constantly under pressure to push them to get their act together, to study, be responsible and school and this and that. This list is endless. End result is just a waste of time, energy, and we end up with a silent prayer that things will become better. Actually, all these children are unique, a limited edition of their own. It can be a neurological or behavioral issue, but our children are our own. If they can help someone in need, lift someone's spirit, be creative and be humane. I think that's all that matters. How a person looks, his or her complexion, his or her background, his or her educational qualifications, his or her place in society is nothing if the person we raised doesn't respect another human being isn't sensitive to people who are different from them, is self-centered and only cares about self-glorification. The times we live now is difficult and everyone is sensitive. A small trigger can cause irreplaceable damage, but we comfort ourselves thinking it is the sign of the times. In reality, if we don't build a sensitivity to the needs and feelings of others, we are heading into the vortex of intolerance. From it, only a volcano of bitterness will erupt. So let's do our bit to stop the spread of this mental pollution. Let our children bloom late but find happiness. Let our children develop empathy to the people who are different and create a world where all will be accepted for who they are. I know most mothers find the struggle and transition till they become independent, heartbreaking. But let's live on a prayer of hope that everything will work out for their good and the world at large. In the meantime, if you get a chance to make a difference to someone's life this week, do it. Let it start a chain of goodness and remove the thick fog of negativity that is surrounding our lives. Let this be a week to remember.